Hey guys, um, today I want to talk about uh, section 9.4 uh, geometric series. Um, geometric series, just like with arithmetic series, uh, we're adding up a bunch of numbers. This time we're adding up a bunch of numbers that are follow a geometric pattern, where before we were adding to get from one term to the next, now we're multiplying. So like this would be times by three, times by three, times by three, over and over and over. Um, it is important to note, both with arithmetic and geometric series, that these are finite series or a partial sum. Basically, we are only adding up a small portion of that whole series of numbers or sequence of numbers. We are, it is possible, uh, tomorrow, the next lesson, 9-5, I will talk about adding up an infinite number of numbers, which is actually possible to do. Um, we'll talk about that tomorrow, but for these arithmetic and geometric series, what we're talking about right now is only adding up a portion of that whole sequence, all right? So this one, you know, it's not going to continue. It's only these one, two, three, four, five, six different numbers. We're only looking to find, you know, S sub six, just adding up those numbers, okay? So that's what we're talking about today. Now, if you haven't already figured out, the worst part of this chapter is definitely keeping all of the formulas separate and keeping them organized. And there is a lot of different formulas in this chapter, so you got to kind of keep those straight. So just to recap what we've already done so far, just to you know, help you put some things together. Uh, we've talked about arithmetic sequences. This was the formula that we could use to find any term we want. If we wanted to find, you know, the 12th term, we could find a sub 12 just by using this sequence if we know it's an arithmetic sequence where we're adding a number to get from one term to the next, okay? So the a sub 1 plus d times the quantity n minus 1. Uh, then we also now have our arithmetic series formulas that we talked about yesterday, where if I want to add up a bunch of numbers, you know, if I want to find S sub 5, an easy way to do that is to know how many terms you're multi or adding together. You add the first term and the last term together, you multiply by that N and divide by 2. Or we had our secondary equation where we didn't have to know our last term, but instead we knew the D value, what we're adding by each time, okay? So those two formulas we would use to find the sum of the arithmetic series. Also, we talked about our sigma notation where we could find, you know, this is the equivalent S sub seven of this series where we could use this formula up here, or technically we'd use that one up there, but this would be easier. Um, how many terms are there? Well. From 1 to 7, that would be 7 terms. We would find the first term by just plugging in a 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. So the first term would be a 1. Then we would find the last term by plugging in a 7. 3 times 7 would be 21. 21 minus 2 is 19. So there's our last term. And then we could just divide that by 2. So... 1 plus 19 is 20. 20 times 7 uh, would be 140. And then a half of 140 would be 70. Okay, so we could find the sum of the first seven terms. Or if you really wanted to, you could do it the long way and find the first term, the second term, and so on and so on, and then add them up. And then we also had from section two our geometric sequence. Okay, this is now we're dealing with a geometric pattern, okay? But this is, again, only to find the 12th term or, you know, the, 12, the 15th term or something like this. We just take our first term, and now we're multiplying by R a certain number of times, okay? So we've got our arithmetic sequences. We've got our arithmetic series, right? Arithmetic sequences, arithmetic series. We've done our geometric sequences. So now it's time to do our geometric series, or how do we add those numbers together, okay? So here's an example of what we're gonna be trying to do here. We, we have this pattern, you know, where we have a two plus an eight plus a 32 plus 128, so on, so on, and we wanna find S sub eight. That's our goal here. 
Well, before we can do that, we really need, I mean, we could keep going and do this the long way where we find all eight terms together and then add them together. Um, but there's better ways of doing this. So let's, let's, let's derive the formula. Let's come up with the formula that we can use for this. Okay. So now if you think about what S sub N means, again, it's just the sum of all the terms together. So we're going to add up the first term. We're going to add up the second term. Well, if you think about how you would come up with the second term, the second term would be that first term times R. And then the third term would be that first term times R squared and R to the third and so on and so on and so on, all the way to the last term, which would be A sub 1 times r to the n minus 1, okay? So this is the first term, the second term, the third term, so on and so on and so on. This would be our last term. Again, it looks very similar to our a sub n formula. Now, the way they came up with this formula actually is pretty creative. What they did is if, if you take that s sub n, that same s sub n again, but this time if you distribute an extra r all the way through it, okay? So that first term, instead of just being a sub 1, it's now a sub 1 times r. The second term would be a sub 1 times r squared. That next term would be a sub 1 times r the third, and so on and so on and so on. Yes, there would be an a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1, but the last term, if you multiply this by another r, you wouldn't have the minus one. There'd be this a sub one times r just to the nth power, okay? Now, if you take those two long equations and you just subtract them. Now, on the left side of the equal sign here, what you have is s sub n minus r s sub n. But now look what happens on the right side. Yes, we have this a sub 1 here. But these two things cancel. These cancel. Everything is going to cancel. Even this thing over here, this is all going to cancel. The only thing we're left with is this last term over here, and it would be a minus the a sub 1 r to the nth power. Okay? So we get all the way down to there right away. Now, what we're trying to come up with is a formula for S sub n. Like, how can we calculate these S sub n? So we got to simplify this a little bit. We could factor this left side, meaning we could pull out an S sub n. And if we did that, we'd have 1 minus r. We can also simplify this a little bit here just to make this a little bit easier to handle because we can pull out an A sub 1. And if we did that, we'd be left with 1 minus r to the nth power. Now, the only thing we have to do to get our s sub n all by itself is divide. So what we have is a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the nth power, all divided by 1 minus r. This is our formula, our main formula, for finding the sum of any geometric sequence. Now, if you keep in mind what all the letters mean, a sub 1, again, that's your first term. The r value, remember, that's what we're multiplying by. That's the number we multiply over and over and over again. n would be the number of terms you're adding together, and then those two r's are obviously the same. So if I use this formula to solve this example up here, all I would have to know is, first off, what is the first term? Well, I know the first term is a 2. And then it's 1 minus my r value. Well, we're obviously multiplying by 4 over and over and over again. So there's my r value. The n is the number of terms. So I'm adding 8 terms together. And then 1 minus the r. And I can calculate that fairly easily by just grabbing a calculator. Come on, turn on. Okay, the way I would type this in my calculator is I would do 1 minus 
4 to the 8th power. Just get that in there. It's going to be a negative because 4 to the 8th power is going to be a big number. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the negative. I'm going to times that by 2. Okay. And then in the denominator, 1 minus 4 would be negative 3. So I'm just going to divide that by a negative 3. And that's what happens to the negative. So the answer to this would be 43,000. 690 okay now don't be surprised if you're getting some pretty big numbers because you know we are dealing with an exponential pattern pattern here exponential growth not only are the numbers themselves getting fairly big fairly quickly but then we're going to add them together okay so don't be surprised when you're dealing with geometric series especially once in a while you're going to run into some pretty big numbers okay not all of them um it all depends on what that R value is. If that R value is small, um, then you're going to have some smaller numbers, obviously. And some interesting thing happens together when your R value is negative. Because when your R value is negative, if you think about that pattern, remember, some of these are going to be positive then. Some are going to be negative. So you're going to go positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So a lot of it's just going to kind of cancel itself out. Um, so that's another way you can get smaller numbers uh, with geometric series, okay? Now, just like with geometric or arithmetic series, we can have a secondary S sub N formula, okay? So the secondary S sub N formula, the way that comes about, if you take this S sub N formula here, the A sub 1, 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. If you distribute that a sub 1 back in, s sub n is equal to a sub 1 times 1 will be a sub 1 minus, and now we have that a sub 1, r to the nth power. Now, this portion right here, this a sub 1 minus r to the n, that thing right there looks very, very similar to our, if we go back to our, geometric sequences here okay it looks very similar to our a sub n formula for our finding how many terms we have a sub 1 times r to the n and then our geometric series is a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 the only difference is that minus 1 what this means this is the exact same thing as this except it has an extra R in it. So basically what we can do is we can substitute this and just say that's the same thing as A sub N. But it's not the exact same thing as A sub N. We have to take this and times it by R. Okay. Now, this formula here is our secondary formula for finding geometric series. Now... It's not, I'll be honest with you, it's not as useful of a formula as the other one. Um, and I'll show you why, basically. You basically need almost all the same types of things. Over here, this formula, we need to know the first term. Well, you also need to know the first term here. This one, you need to know the R. Well, you still need to know the R value here. The only difference here is this is you need to know how many terms you're adding together. This formula over here, you don't necessarily need to know how many numbers you're adding together. All you need to know, though, is what is that last term. So basically, I could have given you this problem and said, find this formula if R is 4, and I only gave you, you know, what is the eighth term kind of thing. This is definitely going to be the main formula you're going to use most of the time, probably 95%. But once in a while, this formula does come in handy. Somebody must be here. My dogs are barking. All right, so let's try a couple examples here. So for a geometric series, okay, so we know it's a geometric pattern. I spelled that wrong, okay. Um, find a sub 1 if they give us the total. S sub 10 is this, and R is 2. Well, we know the total is this. We also know the R value. We're trying to find a sub 1. Well, I would definitely recommend using that first main formula. So let's try that one. So S sub n is equal to, um, it was a sub 1 
times 1 minus r to the n, all over 1 minus r. So we know the total. We can plug that in. Negative 2,046 is equal to, we're not, we don't know our a sub 1. We're trying to find that. We do know the r value, which is 2. We also know the n value because they tell us this is s sub 10, which means we added 10 numbers together. So that's a 10 there. And then we can just do 1 minus the r value again. And now all we got to do is solve that for a sub 1. I would figure out this denominator first. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then we can butterfly that, which means you just take that negative 1, multiply over here. So you got 2,046 is equal to a sub 1 times. And all we got to do is figure out what that mess is, which, I mean, you... You could do this by hand, but an easy way to do it is just 1 minus 2 to the 10th power, okay, is equal to negative 1,023, and then all I have to do is divide, and 2,046 divided by that would give us a negative 2. So a sub 1, oops, a sub 1 is equal to negative 2. Now, what that means, the pattern was, we started at negative 2. We would times by 2, which is negative 4, or negative 8, negative 16, and so on and so on and so on. So it's not surprising that the total sum is negative. But, again, if the r value was negative, it could be positive or negative because it would be alternating back and forth kind of thing. Okay? Um, let's try another one here. Oh, we got to talk about sigma notation. Almost forgot about that. Sigma notation with these. Uh, we talked about sigma notation for arithmetic series, okay? And sigma notation for geometric series is very similar, where this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight terms we're trying to uh, add together. So we're adding, you know, n equals one to eight. Okay, so we're adding eight terms together. And then what goes in here, again, is our general term or our a sub n equation. Okay? So our a sub n equation for geometric terms, remember, is a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. All we have to know is our a sub 1, which is 6. Our our value is what are we multiplying by? Well, we're multiplying by 2. So that is our general term. That is, again, the formula that you could plug in a 1 and get a 6. Plug in a 2, get a 12. Plug in a 3, and so on and so on. Um, basically, you'll notice that sigma notation works exactly the same as arithmetic sequences. The main difference is what is this general term? If it's a linear function, um, similar to the one we did right at the beginning, like this one, that 3n minus 2, that's linear. If you see a linear equation, like y equals mx plus b, something like that, that tells us it's going to be arithmetic. If you see exponential, okay, something like 2 to a power, that's an exponential equation, that's going to be a geometric pattern. Okay. Um, if, it's not, if it's not linear or... If it's not linear or geometric, then it's going to be some other type of pattern. You'd have to have different formulas. But we're only dealing with, um, right now, arithmetic and geometric. Okay? So, again, how you would solve this, easiest way would be just to use our main S sub n equation of a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. We'd have to find our first term. Well, again, you could plug in a 1. I mean, we know the answer is 6, but if you plug in a 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 minus, we're multiplying by 2 over and over and over again. Okay, We're adding 8 numbers together, so that's our n value over 1 minus 2. So we can calculate that on, and get our answer there. All right? So... Um, basically, these are you're going to find these very, very similar to the last section problems. 
the only real difference here is you're using a different formula. So, okay, try a few problems. Let me know how they go, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, hopefully everything's going well, guys. Take care.